Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. TFG Football is an IBM production and you can also check out their other awesome shows like Geek Fruit with fellow and television geek Stages Jishnu and Dinkar as they discuss the world of science fiction and nerd culture. You're listening to TFG Football. Hello and welcome everyone. Well, uh, before we start the show, sorry for this voice of mine. My throat is kind of screwed up, so bear with me. But uh, we shall talk about it. I have other people also, so if in case it goes worse, I will hand over the mic to them. <laughs> Kevin is joining me in the studio and Chiranjee is joining us via phone call. Now, before we uh, talk about that big news that happened about the committee meeting, uh, all of that, the between the AIFF and I-League, we shall touch upon a few signing stories. Now, Mohan Bagan has signed Balwant and Subhashish. They are all preparing for the upcoming CFL. Uh, we did speak about other, you know, the sponsorship coming in and then we also spoke about before earlier uh, that they're planning to stay with uh, Sanjay Sen and other few Indian players that they're looking at. Uh, the other news is that ATK have secured Debjit. Uh, we didn't mention about this. Now, the other final confirmation yesterday was uh, Kerala Blasters finally made the official announcement of uh, signing CK Vineet. So, he is officially left Bengaluru and now part of uh, Kerala Blasters. Now, on the other side, Bengaluru FC have signed a foreign player uh, from Australia. He goes by the name Eric Parthalu, a veteran 31 years old guy. Uh, I think he's a midfielder. And well, let's see how it all works out. Now, coming back, these were the signing news. As we say, it's part of our daily show now because the season is up and coming, ready. Almost it's going to start after the World Cup, the Under-17 FIFA World Cup. And let's come back to the big meeting that happened yesterday. Now, Chiranjit, happy with all those pointers? I mean, just to mention a few... I-League and ISL will be held simultaneously, of course. Uh. <laughs> I mean, no surprises there. Everybody agreed to that. Stars post to telecast I-League 2017-18. Well, let's see. Well, how the, uh, well, the undisputed positive that came from that uh, meeting was that mm-hmm. Star Sports is going to show uh, I-League. Yeah. You know, but I, no, I'm, I'm still, I'm still ho- not like going all gaga over it. I want to know exactly how many matches will be televised. What will be the kickoff timings like, uh, and uh, whether they will be available on HD or not? Yeah. So all that details we'll have to wait for. But Star Sports taking it on is much better. You know, we'll we'll probably get uh, a lot better telecast quality and a little bit more promotion. So one crore central marketing budget. Hmm. That that's still not good enough. I was I was expecting at least ten to fifteen crores being spent. Mm. Uh, it just shows that you know they they're just gonna. I, I don't actually think that a one crore marketing budget will do like much better than what we have had over the last two seasons. Right. Maybe like a few extra advertised uh, spots here and there, but it it won't really make that. How much is it? Is it increased by? Yeah, I mean it. it yeah, yeah, thoda sa like two roti tha, abhi three roti ho gaya. It, it's not really, you know, uh, that big, big of a difference. I mean, if he if he wanted to make an impact, I mean, uh, you know, spend the kind of money a small time TV serial does, <laughs> you know, which is probably like uh, five to ten crores uh, for advertising. Well, it's it's yeah, see, it's, it's not enough for a top division league. I think. Uh, you know, other than uh, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Nepal and Bhutan, you know, countries like this, almost everybody spends more to promote the top division league than India does. Mm. So, and and the kind of money that is going into ISL and the major promotion that it receives uh, across languages, across channels, uh, and I'm just talking about the sense marketing, not the kind of marketing that clubs do. Mm. To promote themselves, yeah, it's it's not you know just just a few clubs promoting themselves is not going to be enough for the brand. Yeah. But then again, everybody knows I League is going to go away. So we we are like uh, I don't know if we, if we are lucky or lucky that we are getting another uh, mm. season, season of I League. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, that, that's the way you know. Everybody is treating it uh, like the kid that's dying. You know, thoda mm. sa you know you you be nice to him, but. You know, nobody is really, is really trying to revive 
or really push something good for it i think even at the i league if we uh, consider last season or pri- prior to that we've seen bengaluru fc just taking up uh, things up things you know in a manner that we've not seen before you know uh, just because yeah. bengaluru were, bengaluru were able to promote and at least uh, make themselves known in uh, around bengaluru and wherever they've been you know we've seen uh, even in uh, away games they had they had marketed themselves you know it, it's not yeah. just for the club it's for the league as well because there's a club that's playing in a league it, it automatically brings eyeballs to that no so yeah, th- bengaluru is uh, uh, seen missing now yeah bengaluru did it uh, we used to see you know the holdings in shillong uh, aizol used to have like uh, you know advertisements and uh, uh, just artwork all over the town yeah. depicting the club publicizing the club you know uh, it's not like somebody really wants to get excited about the league and people who give uh, you know put, put advertising on tv you know that's where the major money comes from right the sponsor who will put their uh, you know uh, their advertisements on on the television they are not looking to advertise in clubs they want the league brand to be, be big hmm. in order to put their money in and that has never been there. you know from AIFF or IMG Reliance IMG Reliance have been uh, controlling i league since what 2011 in 2010 towards the end they came on board they never gave the i league brand a push like they have been pushing i said i mean it's day and night the kind of treatment that has been given out so it's just a continuation of the same i don't think for a minute that isl's uh, you know or or, or i league's advertise or uh, the way it will be pushed will be anywhere near isl it will all, always be a preferential treatment to isl you know all the way hmm. Now it's also a common thing that these meetings that come by we also see similar pointers being shown or being discussed over the period now one such is that the committee has asked AIFF general secretary to discuss with AFC regarding the future roadmap of Indian football i think this will be part of every meeting unless and until the final closure and the final scene that the vision that we've seen for Indian football and it's just funny at times and the other thing is that you also form a meeting to then form another group of committee to form another meeting it's like a task force formed yeah. to oversee operations marketing and promotion of the i league how beneficial will this be yeah some people who do not have much to do they will have <laughs> things to do now you know yeah. because they are part of the committee now <laughs> That, that's it nothing else you know you don't arrive at any uh, decision after these committees are made because there's no you know structure in place there's no deadline given to them they just okay pass it on to another committee they will decide and they will have another meeting maybe even they will have some sub committee uh, uh, deciding on that no it, it's that that structure has been missing and that's the reason we are lacking behind Yeah. you know the, the things are just taken for granted uh, th- there's really no seriousness shown by the by the committee members and it's a meeting that you know just keeps you again uh, what we've got from the meeting is not something that has surprised us yeah. you know it was already there now these points like i uh, star sports are going to broadcast that was already spoken uh, the league road to be held simultaneously we already know that what what new have we have we been struck with Mm. No, it's not a big surprise that's coming. It's just something that being talked over and over and over again. Mm. Yeah, see, the uh, one of the things that uh, has you know one of the problematic things about the structure of decision making is that the I League committee cannot make uh, decisions like executive decisions regarding things like how many foreigners will be there and uh, you know uh, wh- how many under twenty two players you must have in the squad or. Uh, whether in the starting lineup you need one, that has to go to the AIS of Executive Committee, right? But what is disappointing here is that if the clubs had actually come to a consensus, we would hear that yeah, I mean, I mean the press release would be worded that way that hey, uh, you know, it was decided the deci- uh, it I mean it was discussed the discussion was fruitful and we will make a uh, you know recommendation to. any particular decision to the uh, ais of executive committee but that's not how it apparently went down I and mean, uh, east bengal mohan bagan churchill brothers they're still asking for eight foreigners uh, in the squad and five on the pitch the same as isl hmm. may i point out but it is crazy to just even uh, you know deviate from that at a time when clubs are trying to sort of 
control the kind of money they put into iLeague because they know that iLeague is on its way out, right? Same reason why uh, you know the advertisers are uh, hesitant to put their money uh, on iLeague hmm. because everybody knows it's not going to be there for a while. So I mean, uh, after a while, so it, it's it makes no sense why they would push for extra foreigners. Uh, it's just uh, to get a artificial competitive advantage for themselves yeah. uh, for for these three clubs and uh, push down the other ones who want to stick to their Indian talent. Mm-hmm. It, now, I was coming to that point, Ranjit, of the uh, you know, number of foreigners. Now, why was it so difficult for them not to decide on this in the yesterday's meeting that they have now yet to decide? Because I'm, I'm actually happy about one thing. It shows that the clubs who are, who want just four partners in the squad, that is no change in the rules. They are sticking to their demand. You know the likes of Aizol, uh, Chennai City, Minerva, Punjab. They just want to stick to what has been there. You know, uh, four foreigners do not increase, do not shoot up budget or anything. Just keep to it. And and they have been. Uh, I mean, it's not like they're buckling down now. Hmm. That's why there is no decision. That's why, you know, the uh, report came out that they, you know, they could not come at a decision and they just forwarded it to the AISF Executive Committee. That is because at least they held their ground and I give them credit for that. Hmm. East Bengal and Mohan Bagan, they seriously are not thinking about the league. They're seriously not thinking about uh, Indian football as a whole. They're thinking about just themselves hmm. here. Yeah. Okay, and, and it's disappointing. And Seriously, like one of one, what what impression this gives is that they are coming from a place of selfishness and fear, and and as a Mohan Bagan fan, that offends me because I don't want my officials to work out of fear because we have a long history of fighting with pride, hmm. and why are you messing with our pride by doing this detrimental thing like that to the league and to the other clubs as well? So. Yeah, I seriously do not agree with this at all. Mm-hmm. Now, even the other point of the fact that the format of Super Cup Champions Cup will be decided later, and we mentioned about, I mean, generally mentioned about, you know, the central marketing expenditure of rupees one crore. There's also travel subsidy and special subsidy, which is fifty lakhs and twenty lakhs respectively per club. Now, all of these figures and all of the numbers that's thrown out, and you heard, and we heard Chiranjit say that he did expect a little more from that, you know. What do you make of all these? I think it's a good step uh, because this was something that was raised by the clubs uh, first and foremost. Uh, it wasn't that uh, the I League just handed over to them. You know, uh, when the clubs start speaking out together, it wasn't that one. Uh, it was this one club's demand. You know, together they they say, put forth the demand saying uh, it needs to increase because it, it becomes a burden on those clubs who do not have bigger budgets. And when you want clubs to participate on the highest level, you know, you take in uh, corporate entries. It's not one club. I think uh, the Chennai City, Minerva, DSK. That they've all come in through corporate routes. They've paid a huge sum of money, not knowing what the future is. You give them something so that at least their burdens are reduced. You know, this this is in a way positive hmm. because it was fulfilled by the I, I League after the clubs put up yeah. the demand. Hmm. Yeah, look, uh, just look at the situation that they have. And we had uh, we heard uh, you know rumors that uh, DSK Shivajians would not be able to. Uh, con- and now we're hearing, okay, they are, uh, you know, considering to uh, just keep going, uh, keep things alive for this season uh, by, uh, you know, using a lot of their academy players, hmm. right? Yeah. So they are going to play a lower budget team. Look at Chennai City FC. They're going to run into trouble uh, regarding which stadium they're going to use. And they're in trying to invest uh, in a new stadium that's coming up in Chennai, right? Yeah. So they, they need to spend money on that. So their first team will have a lesser budget. Look at Minerva Punjab. They cannot continue in that crappy stadium in Ludhiana. So they will move back to their actual home ground, which is in Chennai. So they need to renovate that in order to host high league matches. Yeah? yeah. So they need to spend money on that and they, they cannot have their first team budget go up. Right? Look at Mohan Bagan. They need... <laughs> they, they just... They, it seems like they're on an adrenaline rush because they're getting a new sponsor. Hmm. Okay, and, and probably like a couple of other sponsors uh, will join as co-sponsors. Uh, and it, it's it's a stopgap arrangement, but 
even they have infrastructure costs coming up they need to install two new flood lights they need to go uh, you know build a away dressing room and a referee's room so that uh, they can hold i league matches in their own ground which which should have been done like 10 years ago hmm. you know they so that no you don't run into any trouble regarding uh, stadiums at all so yeah if if they going to do that even i i don't think even they should want their first team budget to go up hmm. <laughs> it just does not make sense why anybody would want this rule to, be, uh, to, to come into effect mm. only i think churchill brothers and east bengal will be the the, the most direct beneficiaries of this rule and uh, i don't know why mohan bagan is wrong with it it's, it's absurd that this discussion is even being had yeah. you know i think should just keep to its rules and keep this moral higher ground that yes we are the top division and we are the platform where the best of indian talent can find its expression at the forefront hmm. not yeah. like isl which is filling its squads with foreigners and giving the best roles on the pitch to the foreigners period even if you have eight on the squad and five on the pitch that is still too much hmm. still too much because we need to give more space for the indian talent to come to the fore yeah that's it Yeah. Well, just when you saw all of these good things happening, and then suddenly you see such uh, you know negotiations happening that we want to just because you're comparing yourself with another tournament that's happening, it's it's kind of funny. It's kind of unfair to say. Uh, but coming down to one last point that was mentioned, that was also mentioned in the meeting, was the PSUs to participate in institutional corporate league starting in 2017-18 season. What exactly do they mean by this, Kevin? So uh, PSU is actually uh, government companies uh, mm-hmm. that are in the public sector. So uh, is this something that uh, I League has gone back on, Chiranjit? Because uh, what I uh, understand is uh, uh, the the I don't know what term it was used for Air India and uh, those clubs that uh, they were no longer allowed to participate in the I League. and uh, that yeah. led to uh, you know a lot of dominance uh, just go away. no these these clubs who been institutional clubs right so they've been into uh, the i league and they've shown how strong they can be you know mm. having a good structure they have yeah. a, having a good backing because uh, they are not into uh, you know uh, just total sports yeah. because they they dedicate a part of uh, their resources to building up uh, and we also seen players coming from there yes them. and and we seen a lot of demand also for these yeah. uh, players to get into these clubs yeah. and is this something that i league is coming back on because they had once you know thrown away these clubs and now they want them back no the thing is uh, about the structure you know we had uh, hal we had air india we had uh, others uh, who are institutional right but the thing is that these particular uh, clubs used to often compensate players by giving them jobs or uh, just uh, you know take players out of their own office leagues and put them uh, into the uh, into the club i think the problem was that uh, you know people don't really up uh, to support uh, companies okay mm. uh, you know the the, comp- the club had to have a more uh, uh, you know soil based identity rather than corporate based Mm. Yeah, this is not formula one this is a football league and you need i mean look at look at bengaluru fc right it's owned by a corporate but it's an independent entity of its own and it claims to represent the soil it's it's bengaluru fc not jsw fc right, right. it's the, you have mumbai fc which is owned by the sl group but it's not sl fc it's mumbai fc you know if if air india owned the club and they called they named it after an area that it represented i don't think there would have been a problem and it would be an entity that is much much more independent than just being a reflection of the corporate uh, that owns it you know like dsk shivajians dsk owns and controls it but shivajians have their own identity right i think that was the problem with air india or hal uh, simply because uh, the players often tended to be a bit uh you know uh, compensated on a more na- amateur level some of them were employees and uh, it it sort of did not fit in with the vision that was there for the top division league to sort of really expand and be more appealing because 
I'll tell you, maybe some uh, Air India employees turned up to watch the match. Some of them were told to come and support Air India. But how many people just turns on the TV to watch Air India play? You know, hmm. how many people really feel that strongly about Air India? It's a, it's a bit of an advertisement, but it's a shallow uh, popularity. You know, I mean, it, it, it's a shallow way to represent the league. Yeah, yeah. So are we are we seeing that this will be coming back again starting from 2017 and is that what it means like this is going to come well, back It's a separate league that uh, I league is planning to get, get along with Okay but again uh, the main point is uh, you have to do it on your own budget <laughs> that's what I league says <laughs> Yeah the thing is I think is like look if, uh, if if I think those clubs should come back I mean Mahindra United was an example right it was it was way more professional and nobody would have asked them to go away gct was an example way more professional club and it had some appeal with the local populace hmm. uh tempo named after a family yeah but it has come to stay uh, you know uh stand on its own churchill brothers yeah again it, it, do, it doesn't carry the name of a place but then it, they have uh, their contribution or their connection to the sport has built an own identity and they they do have fans yeah, yeah you know yeah. so i think it's it's about the way you brand that club and if you want to go back to that then uh, you you'll have to adopt a more modernized identity rather than just you know have an office team hmm, hmm. because you don't really want the idea that an office team is playing in the top division league hmm. <laughs> and it, because it doesn't really sell uh, the league at all yeah Now is this like uh, I mean you can't handle your own league and then you are asking people to come in okay pitchin but your own budget have let's start another league also aaj ki party meri taraf se but then you have to get your own food yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's like that i mean it's it's crazy her now all of these things are good when they are when they are said now we were happy okay it's been telecast it's all good uh, star sports will come on board and everything all of that uh, it's also good when it's down in the written down it's also good when it's written down in the paper and when we are reading it now it will be great it will be really great and awesome and out of the world if it's implemented like that and that for that we'll have to wait because only after the world cup gets over we will finally see something uh, you know getting towards it and get something building up and the teams are doing their job the clubs are doing their job of signing players coaches that's how that's how you have to do you have to build your team before the way before the season starts but it's a, it's a very good idea i would say because you know having a league at the topmost level uh, it just adds more players hmm. you know if not the most professional uh, players over there yeah. but it gives a platform yeah it does no what i'm saying is all of this is good i hope it's implemented in its right way and taken consideration and given the same importance if not the same at least you know at least get a better than yeah, what it, what it, it was, was yeah. exactly because even when in that uh, when it was that bad you got viewership you got people coming out and supporting so imagine if you take one step forward there will be much more people coming out and much more engagement happening which is what we have to wait and see now uh, i hope it all ends with good see once again we end with With hope <laughs> that's all we have <laughs> now i hope you uh, enjoyed the show uh, and you understood a bit of it and if you haven't you can read up about it it's on our website thefangarage.com do follow the twitter handle of tfg football where you get updates about everything indian football you can also talk to us directly on twitter chiranjit oja boja underscore kevin suju matthew 94 uh, if you listen to us on youtube please do the honors like share subscribe hit the bell icon so you don't miss any update any new episodes from us leave your comments let us know your thoughts and uh, have a great day folks you know to listen to us on our various podcasting apps like soundcloud itunes etc have a great day enjoy come back to us tomorrow hey because of the daily show right so cheers bye was Tantrik Steve from Hansraj College Delhi performing at IIT Bombay's Mood Indigo. Just like them there's a lot of new talent and art coming out of colleges all across India but unfortunately most of this goes completely unnoticed or ignored. To fix this we started atkt.in. 
Hi, I'm Ankur. I'm a musician and a rapper. And I found that one of the best things about being an artist myself is finding new talent. Through ATKT.in, Tanya, my colleague who's a dancer, and our whole team really is putting all of our efforts into discovering and promoting all the coolest talent that's coming out of colleges all across India. And this goes up on our website, our social media, TV, radio, and now of course, this podcast with IVM. Make sure you go to our website, support the talent with your likes, your shares, your comments. All of that really matters. Go ahead, check it out. ATKT.in Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Sorry to say, but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun. As you can see, there's death, destruction and chaos taking place all around us. But don't you worry, food and drinks will be served shortly and I would recommend checking out IVM Podcasts to get some of your favorite Indian podcasts. We'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over. Thank you.